this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications and also subscribe to my backup channel, so T Ash Miracle, and uh, my podcast channel. Links will be in the description, and we got a lot to discuss. It has been reported that Nicki Minaj's current tour is so successful that she'll return to the United States this summer after her Europe gag city shows and do three or four huge stadium shows um, when she comes back to the um, United States. It has been confirmed that Universal Republic Live Nation are seeing the money coming in from this little pink lady um, and Pink Friday 2 being talked about weekly by these companies that I guess Live Nation and Universal, they want her to do a stadium tour. She would be the first female rapper to headline a stadium tour. Now, let me know how y'all feel about that. I think a stadium tour would be amazing for, you know, Nicki Minaj. I did go to one of Nicki Minaj's shows. The T is on Patreon. You know, the Patreon family knows that I went to the Nicki Minaj world tour for Pink Friday too. And, um, you know, I think she's a great performer. The only thing though, Nicki be late. Okay. That's one thing about Nicki. She not always on time. So, you know, maybe for the stadium tour, she should get an opening act, you know, because I think Monica, she doesn't always open. I think she comes into the middle of the show. So I think that having an opening act, especially if you don't know you're going to be on time, I think that might be a great idea. She doesn't need one um, if we're talking about, you know, her performance wise. But for lateness, an opening act is a smart idea. Now, with that being said, um, they are confirming who's going to be at the Met this year. And allegedly, Nicki Minaj is confirmed to be at the Met for 2024, which I believe is next week. Um, but she was confirmed last year and she didn't go. Okay. Um, they said Gigi Hadid, Purdue Chicken, um, Katy Perry, Madison Beer. I like Madison Beer. Hopefully she goes. Um, Walmart, Yonce, and Baby Mama are supposed to go. Eh, don't care for them. Um, I believe Megan and Botch and Bitter are also supposed to be there. And Rihanna and Queen B are supposed to be at the Met. All I know is if Nicki Minaj goes to the Met this year, she gots to kill it. Okay, she got to kill it. She needs to be best dressed. Okay, that's what the Met is for, to be best dressed. So, you know, I think the worst dress is probably going to be Doja out of all the female rappers. I feel like sometimes Doja is a really hit or a miss. Okay, and I feel like sometimes she just too over the top. So it's like always a miss recently. Hopefully she has a wig this time. I'm not here for the bald head scallywag antics, but um, let me know if you guys would be here for Nicki Minaj going to the Met. Um, I hope that she kills it, you know, because I feel like the last two times she went, people were like very critical of her outfits. I thought she killed the 2022 look. I wasn't here for the hat, but I thought she killed her look. So we'll see what happens this time around. Uh, will she be in Dulce Gabbana? Because she's been mentioning Dulce Gabbana a lot recently. So I wonder if she's going to do Dulce or another high-end brand. Now, moving on to Doja, The Town is Dead has reached 1 billion streams on Payola 5. It's her record-breaking sixth song to achieve this, the most for any female rapper in history. Wow. The queen of charts has been taken over. Now, we all know Doja gets payola, but at least she's getting the payola. RCA, the colorist, giving Doja Cat the best payola in the game. I don't know who has better payola, her or Champagne Thickums. I think Doja Cat got the best payola. Because even when she don't sell, she going number one. Even when she only do 400 copies first week for her deluxe, she still get a billion streams. You know, RCA, the colorist, they giving the best payola to Doja Cat. And that's honestly commendable. 
Like, she don't even got to sell records, and she's still breaking records. How do you not sell records and still break them? I mean, that's amazing. You got to give her her tens. Doja Cat got the best payroll in the game. Okay, um, is it as great as the chart obsessed races? Paola, no, I don't think so, but she still got one of the best Paola in the game for female rappers. The other female rappers need to get their Paola up. Y'all not getting the Paola package like Doja Cat is. Okay, y'all need to get y'all Paolas up. Uh oh, the EBT awards are not too happy with Botch and Bitter, and they want to replace her with another. Headliner. Now, while Nicki Minaj is doing stadium tours, okay, like the icon she is, um, it still looks like, unfortunately, um, Botch and Bitter has yet to sell out the EBT Experience, okay, concert, um, which also features Gunna, Sexy Red, I think DeVito, and a few other artists, okay? And they still can't sell out, which I previously talked about before. Um, EBT, allegedly, they're a little bit worried. And they actually want to remove Botch and Bitter as a headliner behind the scenes. Okay, or they want to add more artists to the show to get it sold out. Okay, Um, you know, unfortunately, it's not looking good for Botch and Bitter. But instead of using... The million or 1.3 million she used to investigate Tasha K's finances, she should have used that 1.3 million to purchase some tickets. Okay? It's like Botch and Bitter and Titanic Records don't know how to play chess. What they should have done is they should have bought the tickets and handed them out. Okay? That's what they did with Summer Jam last year. So I don't understand why they just won't buy the tickets and then give them out to the fans. Okay, play chess, not checkers. I mean, Titanic Records is making Bots and Bitter look bad. If she can't even sell out the EBT experience, how is she ever going to do a world tour? I mean, why won't they just help Bots and Bitter and take the money out of her budget and then she just owe them later? Okay, um, but this is not a good look for Botch and Bitter. If I was the EBT Awards, I would just add Doja Cat. Maybe Doja Cat would do it. She could be another added, um, you know, artist to the show. Um, even though her performance probably would be the best. Um, who else? I think SZA possibly should be added, but they don't really got any major stars other than like Sexy Red, to be quite honest. So let me know how y'all feel about that. Moving on to Scratch Off. Um, as we know, she is headlining the Birthday Bash in ATL. And she will be performing at the State Farm Arena. She hasn't sold out either. But allegedly, Scratch Off wants to bring out um, Botch and Bitter and Glorilla Glue to perform. Okay. Um, she wants to bring out Botch and Bitter and Glorilla Glue to perform at her birthday bash. Um, so hopefully that will encourage fans to buy some tickets. Okay. What would have been more strategic if Scratch Off, Botch and Bitter, um, Glorilla Glue and Megan all went on tour together? That way it would have sold out instantly. Okay. Um, and if they just kept the tickets like at 40 to $50, that would have sold out. You know, they wouldn't have to worry about ticket sales. Now, moving on to Queen B and Blue, as it was revealed, Queen B and Blue Ivy will be in the Mufasa um, Lion King movie coming out December 20th. Um, Blue Ivy will be the voice of Kiara the daughter of King Simba and Queen Nyla. And according to Barry Jenkins, Queen Bee will be working on the music for the new Lion King movie. Let me know how y'all feel about that. I am here for, you know, Blue getting her acting debut in a Disney film. I probably won't watch this one though. You know, I'm not really into like the Lion King and stuff like that. So I won't watch it. But I'm happy for Blue. Um, and I don't really care for Queen Bee doing 
the music for The Lion King because I didn't really care for Black is King. I didn't like that one. No shade. Um, one of her worst albums, in my opinion. I wasn't here for Black is King or The Gift or whatever music she did for The Lion King. I wasn't here for it. But, um, you know, I do think that she'd be one step closer to getting um, her Oscar that she wants. You know, she wants that Oscar, so she'd be one step closer to getting it. Now, fans are saying that this is nepotism. Um, and if it wasn't for her parents, um, you know, she would not be getting a role. But I don't really care. I mean, that's what nepotism is for. You putting your children on. I mean, it happens all the time in the industry. Y'all don't say that about the Hadid sisters or the Kardashians. Y'all don't say that about Will and Jada when it comes to, um, you know, Jaden Smith and Willow. Okay, that's nepotism. So I don't really care that Queen Bee is using her power and pull to make moves for Blue Ivy. She should. That's her daughter. You know, I think any parent that has any type of power would do that for their child. It's called building generational wealth, okay? Uh, you know, what do you guys want Blue Ivy to do? Sit at home and eat bonbons all day? She needs to get to work. You know, when Queen Bee was her age, she was working. When she was Blue Ivy's age, you know, she was in girl's time, you know, um, as a child. And then she worked her way up to doing Destiny Childs. Then she became solo. You got to put in the work at a young age if you want to be successful. So I think that Queen Bee should continue with the nepotism. And um, I think Blue Ivy deserves her role. You know, stop painting. Now, JT put out the music video to OK, which I feel like should have came out when the song came out, but whatever. Now, I'm being honest with you. It looked like she kind of got a budget. I was like, her music video looked better than the ones that Botch and Bitter put out. No shade. It looked like she got the Botch and Bitter um, budget that was taken away from Loose Tooth. You know, the only thing, though, I would have liked to see JT do a little bit more choreography. Just a little bit. Um, you know, she did a few hand movements, you know. Um, but it wasn't a lot of choreography. And I felt like that would have been better than, you know, women twerking. Because she did have a few girls twerking in the music video. And I understand this is a trap record. But I would have liked to see JT step out of the box and do, you know, a little bit more choreography. Um, especially if you can twerk, you can do choreography. Okay, this is a twerking record. That's what they were promoting in the music video. And so if you can twerk, you can do some choreography. That's how I kind of felt about it. But everything else looked good. She looked good in the music video. I love the different looks. Um, you know, she had the tape on the titties a few times in the music video. She had a lot of cheetah print. and. The music video looked like it had a budget. So good job to JT. Um, It looks like she's definitely getting more of a push. And to be quite honest, um, I think that it's well-deserved because JT has talent. Okay? So let me know how y'all feel about the music video. Now, Sukiyana also asked JT to clear the air and wants to know if JT was dissing her in her new song, OK, because she don't got no beef with JT. Because I was locked up when the song came out. I come home, I look at my phone, everybody keep tagging me. They keep tagging me. And they tagging Cardi, too. They said JT was trying to diss me in a song or Cardi B. So she said in a song, um, a bitch broke her cheap ass veneers on some crab legs and she always be talking shit. I did. Now, we all know I don't broke my, my, my teeth on some crab legs. I love crab legs. Shit, that's normal shit. I ain't have to post it. I post it because I'm a real I live my truth. But I don't talk shit about bitches. I, I always show love, never hated on a bitch, never called a bitch, always show love. And I was at JT birthday party, it was hugs and giggles, so I don't feel like she's talking about me. And I don't take her as the girl that just start trouble with random people when she dropping a song. So they say there's trouble in paradise for her and Cardi. Y'all be hype me up to roast a bitch, I ain't even, I, I, I can't, I ain't going. I, I miss ain't going, you feel me? Like, JT, just clear it up, because I know you see the people keep tagging me and Cardi. They're only tagging me and her. Can you let us know who you're talking about? Because I know Cardi drop, broke her tooth on a uh, bagel, but... I just don't feel like, I just don't feel like me and you got no tea, no shade. So then let me know. But Now, like I said before, I felt like she was talking about botching better. That's what I said in my review. Because 
The last time I checked, Sukiana's never really said anything negatively about JT. And so Sukiana is confused why Botch and Bitter fans and some of the barbs are bringing her into it. Okay? Now, I think JT got it mixed up. I think she meant to say bagel, and she probably thought it was the crab legs. Okay? Um, so I think she got Sukiana and uh, Botch and Bitter's veneers situation mixed up. That's what I think happened. Okay? Um, but I feel like she was dissing Botch and Bitter, and I said that originally. Where everybody was saying, oh, she just in Sukiana. I'm like, Sukiana has never publicly said anything negative about JT. Botch and Bitter has several times. And so has her minion, Glorilla Glue. Okay? So, like I said, I was right yet again. Now, Kung Fu Kenny is back. And he's ready to put the BBL boy back in his place. He said... He said the superpower is getting neutralized. I can only watch in silence. The famous actor who once knew is looking paranoid now is spiraling. Okay. Uh, Cause Champagne Thickums was doing AI diss tracks. Um, you know, trolling Kung Fu Kenny on social media and Kung Fu Kenny don't even use social media. It was kind of just tacky. He said, you moving like a degenerate heavy antic is feeling distasteful, probably for using Tupac's voice, you know, um, in that terrible diss track he put out. He said, Why calculate you not as calculated? I can predict your angles, fabricated stories on the family front because you heard Mr. Morale. A pathetic master manipulator, I can smell the tales on you now. He said, you are not a rap artist. You are scam artist with the hopes of being accepted. Tommy Hilfiger stood out, but FUBU had never been your collection. How can I make music that electrify him? You make music that pacify him. And he basically goes on to say, you're a master manipulator and calls him a B word. He said, the very first time I shot my Drake, the homie told me aim this way. I didn't point out enough. Today, I show you to learn from those mistakes. Somebody had told me you got a ring on. I'm ready to double wage. I'd rather do that than let a comedian nigga make Pac turn his grave. Okay? Cutthroat business. You got shit twisted. What is it? The breaks? I hurt your feelings. You don't want to work with me anymore okay then he said i know you got language barriers there's no accent you can sell me because a lot of people think that champagne thickums is a culture vulture and he does like the jamaican accent you know he tries to adapt to different cultures you know he has his british accent his jamaican accent then you know he has his gangster accent and we all know that he's just not about that life um he said yeah cole and arby know i'm a selfish nigga the crown is heavy i pray they my real friends if not i'm y n w melly i don't like you popping ish that shit not real he said f pushing p let me see you push a T. Oh, so he trying to say like, you not tough because you really haven't came for push a T yet, which is true champagne thickums. You ran from push a T once he spilled the tea about your secret son, Adonis. He said, you better off spinning again on him. You think about pushing me. Then he said, I know some ish about niggas that's gonna make, gonna wanna look like a saint. Okay, because, you know, Gunna is part of that gang with Young Thug. Then he said, I hate the way you walk and the way you talk. Okay, I'm going for the important lines. I'm not reading everything because this is a seven minute diss track. So I'm going with the most important lines. I hate the way you dress. I hate the way you sneak this. If I catch a flight, it's going to be direct. And that is facts. Kung Fu Kenny is very direct with Champagne Thickums. We hate the B words you F because they confuse them with real women. And notice I said we is not just me. I'm what the culture feeling. And I think that has a lot to do with Champagne Thickum sleeping with a lot of different girls that are getting surgery done like he does um, that got the BBL and lipos. He said, how many fairy tale stories about your life till we had enough? How many more black features till you finally feel you black enough? Yikes. 
He said, I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he act tough. You gonna make a nigga bring back Puff? Let me see if Chubbs really crashed something. Yeah, my first one, like my last one, is a classic. You don't have one. Let your core audience stomach that. Didn't they tell you where to get your abs from? Yikes, he talking about champagne thickums surgery now? Goodness gracious. Megan Thee Stallion is to blame for that. Ever since she mentioned Champagne Thickums fake abs, everybody been talking about it. But if you was on Patreon, you would have known I Ben spilled that tea. And he's not the only male rapper with fake abs. You got to go on Patreon for that. Then he said, Top Dog, who do F they think they playing with? Extortion my middle name as soon as you jump off with the place, bitch. I'm allergic to the lamish. Only you like being famous. Yachty can't give you no swag neither. I don't give an F about who you hang with. I hate the way you walk, the way you talk. I hate the way you dress. Surprise you wanted that feature request. So it looks like Champagne Thickums is upset that Kung Fu Kenny denied his most recent feature request because I believe they worked with each other in the past. It was called Poetic Justice. And then he said... Then he said, when I see you stand by Sexy Red, I believe I see two bad bitches. I believe you don't like women. That's real. Competition, you might pop your ass with them. (laughs) (laughs) Then he said, let me speak on percentage. Show me your splits. I make sure I double back with you. You were signed to a nigga that was signed to a nigga that said he was signed to a nigga trying to season the sis on that like that record. Wow, wait a minute. The Champagne Thickums try to get a season to sis on the like that record? He wasn't even on that record. But he's talking about Wayne and Birdman because Wayne was signed to Birdman and Birdman had his own deal with Republic. So that's why he's saying you were signed to a nigga that was signed to a nigga. But anyway, um, he said, I'm back to the record. Why would I call around trying to get dirt on niggas? Y'all think all of my life is rap? That's hoish. I got a son to raise, but I can see you know nothing about that. Damn. Then he said OVO niggas is D-Riders. Um, you know, but overall, I'm be honest with you. I think Kung Fu Kenny ate Champagne Thickums up. It's 2-0 in my opinion because Champagne Thickums used AI for the second diss track, which I thought was trash. Then he didn't really put out the first diss track with his chest. He leaked it. And so people could speculate, and then he put it on streaming platforms a week later. Champagne Thickums don't really want to smoke. Kung Fu Kenny posted his diss track record for everybody to see. So, unfortunately, Kung Fu Kenny is still the winning champ, in my opinion. But anyway, I got some hot tea on Patreon. Link will be in the description. Have a great day.